Well, he played for a decade and a half, four-time Pro Bowler, uh, number two in passing yards in New England history behind Tom Brady. Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll. Never did to get that, that offensive wizard. Uh, Drew didn't. Uh, and now he is joining us live. So, you know, it's interesting. The Mac Jones body language thing is interesting. So, you know, I've spent a little bit of time with you. Uh, you hold yourself like a quarterback. Um, you know, you're, you're good to the fans. You're, and I've always felt quarterbacks are different. I even go as far as saying on the, on the Wednesday press conference, don't put your hat on backwards. you got a big bank sponsor behind you. You know, I get crap for that. But I say it's, it's like the grown-up among kids. And uh, Mac Jones has some <laughs> dubious body language. What do you – are we overreacting? What do you make of it? You know, it's interesting, Colin. I think we've talked about this a little bit. You know, being a quarterback and now owning and running a business, you know, at a high level, they're kind of the same thing, right? At, at, a, at a high level, and, and you're guiding a team, and they're watching you all the time. And, you know, whatever you've got going on personally, whatever is happening, you know, outside of the office, you know, that stuff has to stay there. And regardless of how you're feeling, you've got to represent – confidence, positivity, um, and, you know, optimism and all of those things, you know, to the people that are watching you all the time. So it, it does matter. There's, there's no question. It does matter. And, and as a quarterback, you always have to be aware that it's not, it's not just you, you, you know, you're, you've got an entire team that's looking at you and expecting you to, um, you know, project confidence and positivity. So, when you look, Garoppolo's going to have uh, some movement, and he's going to have a say. Derek Carr's got a no-trade clause. Your friend Tommy's going to have options. Um, I tend to think, you know, it's, it's funny. What I thought five years ago is not what I think now. I look at the NFL now, and I'm like, I'm not going to go any place with a crazy owner. He'll screw up everything. Uh, and there's a few of those. So let's get past that. We know none of these guys want to go to a crazy owner. Is there something else that you – Drew would look at in your box and say, okay, this is, this is really important that maybe I wouldn't notice. Well, I mean, it's the obvious things. And, you know, when, and when Tom left new England and decided to go to, to Tampa, uh, you know, obviously very smart. And he looked at all the pieces in place, their offensive line receivers, great, you know, very quarterback friendly uh, head coach uh, at the time. Um, and, you know, so you take all of those things into effect and as Tom's looking to move, I mean, I don't know. He may play till he's 60 at this point. You know, I, call it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. But, 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 you know, you have to kind of look at it like, okay, who's ready to win right now? He's certainly not going to a place, you know, where it's a three-year or five-year plan. You know, he's going someplace where uh, if, he, if he leaves Tampa, he's going someplace where, uh, you know, he thinks that they're just a quarterback away from, uh, from being a champion. And, you know, you look at uh, at the two places you mentioned, you know, you look at uh, at the Raiders, um, you know, there are a lot of pieces in place there. There's a great running back and they seem like they're, they're you know, they're close. And obviously he knows Josh McDaniels very well. Uh, the other Josh McDaniels, by the way, the, the real Josh McDaniels is my winemaker, Josh McDaniels. <laughs> um, but the uh, um, and then you look at, at San Fran and, and boy, they're I mean, it looks like they you know, they're set up to make a, a real run, you know, with, you know, Mr. Irrelevant playing quarterback. Right. By the way, he's playing good. Football. He's playing really good football. Um, but, uh, you know, I think those two places would be landing spots, you know, you know if uh, Tom decides to make a move. So Sean Payton said on our show earlier mm -hmm. this week, he said when you top 15 pick and you were uh, a number one pick, top 15 pick. You have to choose somebody that fits the physical prototype. No small receiver, no tiny defensive end. Go get size. And Bryce Young's coming out. He's refined and clever. He's tiny. He's barely six feet tall, and he's a buck 90. I mean, I, he looks small as a college guy. Will Levis at Kentucky isn't as refined, big, strong, thick. And it's funny, the Tua situation, people like him more than I do, but Drew, you're six. I'm tall. You're much taller than me, six five and a half. There were advantages to your size, right? I mean, you knew that very early, right? You probably had a backup that were smaller at some point. Did you always feel your size and your arm strength and your strength was a huge advantage? Oh, it is. And uh, you know the funny, the funny Bryce Young story. I, I, I went to this uh, um, quarterback club uh, Hall of Fame deal a number of years ago, and he was the the high school recipient that year. 
And so we met him and we're like, man, this guy can't go play in the SEC. He's going to die. <laughs> right. I mean, it's just, but he's gone on to, to be an amazing player. And I think, you know, when I came into the league, you know, you had to be big and durable because that's back when they could actually really hit us. Right. Right. Uh, I do think it has changed some now with, with the rules and the way that they take care of, of quarterbacks. And that's why I think, you know, more of these, there's some, you know, mobile quarterbacks are, are, um, you know, having more success because they don't get hit as much or as hard um, as we did back then. So I think, you know, with, with his elusiveness and his pocket presence, I think that he can, uh, you know, be one of those, you know, those high picks. And I think he can be very successful, but they are going to have to take care of him. Yeah. Uh, you know, because dude, man, I mean, Joe Montana was a little guy, but Joe was six, two, six, three, um, you know, and a couple hundred pounds. Uh, Bryce is a, is a little dude, but man, I've been really impressed watching him play though. Um, I, and he seems like he's got all of the stuff. So I wouldn't shy away if I was uh, making that pick just because of his size. All things considered, um, Garoppolo, Tannehill, Derek Carr. Is there one that you watch, all things considered, size, injury history, big game experience? It, it, let's take Brady out of the equation. Of the other guys, the Tannehill could be available. Maybe Kirk Cousins if somebody makes a call. Uh, Derek Carr will be. Garoppolo. One of those guys you would lean to first. I mean, we got Washington could need a quarterback. Houston, Indy. There's a lot of suitors out here, Drew. Yeah, you know, I've, I've always really liked Derek Carr's games. Uh, game, uh, you know, it's it's sort of been surprising to me that that the success hasn't matched up with what I think I'm seeing in, in terms of his ability and arm strength and, and and accuracy and so on. So I, I I don't know why that hasn't been more successful, but I've always really liked his game a lot. Um, you know, so if I was gonna, you know, just based on you know, sort of being the fan perspective, not necessarily the, the film study perspective. Uh, I might lean toward Derek of those three. Um, I just really feel like there's uh, incredible upside still, even though he's been around for a while, he's been productive and so on. I really feel like that he's got the potential to be, uh, you know, a quarterback that can win a Super Bowl for you. You know, um, you were knocked out of a football game. And again, you you probably played at 225. You were 6'5". Um, the DeMar Hanlon hit, was it's something you see 15 times in a game. I mean, I saw another piece of it last night, and I'm like, that's just such a, a random play. Um, you, by the way, Drew, you had a moment that it was pretty frightening for you. Did you, when you watched that moment, uh, was it nerve-wracking for you to watch it? You know, the, the, the thing, there are a couple of things that, that jump out in that um uh, in that situation, you know, number one is I, I, I think that for casual fans, um, and you're seeing some of the pictures here now, you know, I think people tend to lose perspective sometimes that, you know, football players and athletes, we're real people and we care deeply about each other. Um, and that's our opponents as well. You know, there's a kinship. And, and so, you know, you really get to see that this is a, these are real human beings that have real connections and families and so on. But the other piece, and this was true in my instance, uh, you know, the staff that we have and the medical staff and the immediate attention that uh, that DeMar got on the field, you know, cardiac arrest, you know, if you're not in a hospital or in some place where you can get immediate attention, you know, if you're walking down the street and experience cardiac arrest, you're not going to make it. And, and, and so it's, it's a real credit to uh, the training staff, the medical staff, and all of the people that responded to him immediately, uh, kept him alive. And now it looks, based on just kind of what I'm hearing and reading, that like he's, he's uh, showing some really positive signs. And I know that was the case for me. You know, I come off the field um, at the end of the game, and our staff grabbed me, and, and um, I wanted to go in for team prayer and go home and sleep it off. And had I done that, I would have bled out internally and I wouldn't be here. Um, so it's a, a real credit to uh, that training staff and, and that medical staff for their immediate attention to what was going on um, and, you know, saved his life. Uh, and it looks like hopefully now he's, he, whether he comes back and plays again is completely beside the point. The fact that he's still alive is a real credit to their staff. Yeah, Drew Bledsoe, uh, doubleback.com, great wine maker in uh, Walla Walla, Washington. That's the real name of the town. It's a great winery, and uh, the wine is fantastic. One of my, fa I think it's my favorite cab. Uh, double any any wine it's, news here, by the way? Anything new? 
Yeah, man, we're about to uh, about to release the 2020 vintage of uh, Double Back here in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic vintage, you know. 2020, you know, across the entire West, the huge forest fires and a lot of um, damage to a lot of wines in California and parts of Oregon. But we made it through, and the 2020 vintage for us is just spectacular. So we'll be fired up to get that out to the public here in the next couple of weeks. Double Back Wine, DoubleBack.com. Good seeing you, Drew. Always good to catch up, Colin. Best to you and your fam. All right. Uh, really good guy. Yeah, uh, Drew Bledsoe was basically knocked out of the game. It started Brady's career. It was uh, much more serious than Drew knew in, at the time. And as he said, uh, he wanted to go for team prayer. And the doctors were like, nah, no, we got we to gotta get you medical help right now. So uh, the news on DeMar Hamlin is very, very encouraging this morning. And to Drew's point, forget football. Just surviving, living. Uh, his family now is releasing statements. It's very positive. So puts I think everybody here on this show puts us in a little bit better mood. A uh, little, you know, positive feelings today. Momentum has moved. Uh, he is now gripping hands of people. Uh, he has opened his eyes. Um, there's some contact. The doctors are saying it's encouraging. So you know he's a young, super uh, athletic human being. That always helps when you get into a medical crisis. You see it a lot of times in sports where somebody's going to be out for eight weeks and four weeks later, they're like, they're ready to play. Uh, his youth, his athleticism uh, are probably crucial in his recovery. So that's great stuff. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.